Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Clinton Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's the C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. Yeah, welcome to the dojo, my friend. How are you? <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you. Doing hey, well. I, I realize that uh, the weather in Tulsa is probably not as awesome as the weather out there in L.A. How, how would if you had to compare from a meteorological meteorological meteorological, meteorological point of view, easier for you to say? Yeah. <laughs> well, how would you compare the, the weather difference there? Um, let's see. I, I need to be nice to Tulsa in my answer. So let me think. <laughs> Actually, I lived in Tulsa for six and a half years, loved it here, still love it here. Uh, but we live in Southern California, and, and we can always go outdoors well, without, we are honored, without a jacket. Well, we are honored to have you here today. Thank, Thank you for you. making the Thank trip. You. It's and a treat. The, uh, we're t talking today specifically about this concept of upserving. Yeah. And uh, really this idea of upserving versus upselling. And we have thrivers all over the world who say, hey, how do I sell more products to my customers? What do I do? Can you really start by explaining the difference between upselling and upserving? Well, yeah. What's the difference? Well, years ago, I was selling uh, mutual funds and life insurance in Arkansas. And it was for IDS, Investors Diversified Services. And this was a long time ago. And I went out making sales calls every day. I had a memorized sales script. You know, I'd go in and, hi, I'm Jim Cathcart with IDS. You ever heard of IDS? No, it didn't matter whether he said yes or no. My answer was going to be the same. I'll try it. You ever heard of IDS? Uh, no, no, I'm not. No, well, we're the oldest and largest investment trust firm of our, you know, and then I'd go on into my spiel. You ever heard of IDS? Uh, yes. As you know, we're the oldest and largest. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so I had the same script that I would do all the time. Yeah. And this is, you know, nothing bad against IDS. They were doing fine, and they, they're a very respectable company. But I wasn't doing well with them. Mm. And I was going out making these calls and just struggling to make enough to, to stay alive. And I, you know, I kept saying, give me a way to approach people where it's not, you know, mechanical me going out there doing this script Mm -hmm. I want to talk with people. I want to understand them. I want to actually be of help. Yeah. And they said, Jim, you know, the purpose of selling is generate revenue. Mm -mm. Over the years, I've thought about that. And, and because of that initial frustration with the sales activity, uh, I ended up discovering what became today relationship selling, the book mm -hmm. and all the training that goes with it. But the whole concept revolves around being a genuine, honest, helpful person and not being focused on revenue only. You know, that yeah. revenue is the byproduct of a sale. A sales purpose is to help a person, and if you don't do it profitably, you have to stop because you run out of resources. Right. So profit is a very respectable, wonderful thing, and it's great, but it's not the reason a business exists. So what's, what does that have to do with upselling and upserving? Yeah. Well, upselling is what everybody's been teaching for so, so long. Right. And I was always uncomfortable with it. Okay. I, I thought, I, I get it. You're selling them more to help them more. But there's got to be a more natural, more genuine, more sincere approach to that. Well, you know, you've won uh, throughout your career virtually every speaking award you could think of. You've got uh, uh, the Golden Gavel Award, which for thrivers who aren't familiar, uh, the Toastmasters Group awards yep. uh, an award for kind of like the, the best speaker of the of the year or the best speaker. And, uh, you know, the previous winners, I mean, you have Tony Robbins, you have John Maxwell, you have uh, Zig Ziglar. Yep. And Zig Ziglar uh, is one of the guys who has this, has this quote, he says. And uh, Zig Ziglar says, you can, uh, you can have everything in life you want, if you just help enough That's people right. get what, what they, they want. want. That's right. Can you talk about that mindset of helping people get what they want? You bet. And Zig, I had the privilege of knowing and, and being friends with Zig, went to church with him and his wife, Jean, and, and uh, was active with him in the National Speakers Association. Great guy. He endorsed my first copy of Relationship Selling. Oh, I, wow. I put his quote right on the cover of it. Um, up serving is exactly what it sounds like. It's upping 
the service you're providing. See, yeah. upselling's purpose is to generate a bigger transaction. So you bought a car, now I'm going to sell you the custom floor mats, I'm going to sell you the special paint treatment, I'm going to sell you all these, you know, upsell you all these extras. Fine, and that'll help uh, improve your car. But my purpose shouldn't be the upsell, my purpose should be the upserve. Here's the okay. difference. Upselling generates a bigger transaction. Upserving, meaning looking for more ways to satisfy you, mm. generates a bigger satisfaction. Mm. So you have bigger transaction, bigger satisfaction. You say, well, one goes with the other. No. If you focus on upserving, people will get it that you're trying to help. You're, you're genuinely serving. I'd like to uh, make fun of myself for a second and point out what maybe not to do. And thank, you your for letting, thank you for letting the rest of us relax so that we don't have to make fun of you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know with, uh, uh, with my DJ service I started back in the day, you yeah. know, we did entertainment for weddings and uh, corporate parties. And what I used to do is I had this mindset before I learned some of these concepts yeah. uh, of trying to help people and upserve. I was trying to upsell. Yeah. So I would book the package and I would try to convince the event planner that they need to buy more stuff. Sure. So I'd say, well, do you guys want to rent an extra projector? No. Do you guys want to get some extra lights? No. Do you guys want to get a dance floor? No. But when I changed and started asking the question, hey, for your party to make it awesome, to take it to the next level, let's go through a checklist and make sure you guys are taken care of. Or are you still needing anything? Are you still needing maybe a dance floor or anything that would, you know, or are you, do you feel good about that? Well, actually, Clay, we might, we might need one of those. Yeah. And, it, and the way I said it, though, or, or would you like would you like to decorate the room with lighting to kind of create that extra look? Or, See, that's, or I'm trying to help them yeah. instead of trying to sell them. You nailed it. That's that's upserving. Upserving, the spirit's different in upserving. It's coming from a different place in you. You're not trying to find where's his extra money. You that's know? what I was doing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and 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 in the uh, the second instance, that's yeah. what you were doing at first. The yeah. second instance, you're looking for how can we make this really better for them. How can I increase the satisfaction? And let me show you something over here. Sure. Upserving is increasing the satisfaction. Okay. Okay. Upselling is increasing the transaction. Now, what happens if you increase the satisfaction? Then they buy more. Yeah. If they buy more, let me think, whoops. You just increase the transaction. Can you walk me through this? Let's say that I'm a thriver watching this and I own an right. automotive repair shop. Okay? Good. So let's yeah. say that I repair cars and you came in today and you said, I want to fix my left front left tire. Yeah. Well, the transmission, okay? okay? I want to fix my transmission. Under that specific scenario, what are some maybe some specific words that I could say to the client if I wanted to introduce them to maybe some other services I offer and up serve them? What are some things I could say to a client? Or how would you just Well, the first thing is focus on what the customer wants or needs. Okay. So it's all about making this better for the customer, okay. right? So item number one would be let, uh, excellent. Let's take a look at your transmission, okay. and I will get you back on the road with a car you can depend on. No worries about the transmission anymore. Okay. While I'm there, what I'm going to do is take a look at the entire drivetrain. Yeah. So we're going to look at the differential. We're going to look at da 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 And uh, one of the things that we often do is we'll do a complete system check of the seven primary systems in your car. Okay. And if you would like, we'll, we'll uh, be happy to give you an analysis of all that and see if there may be something else that's kind of just on the edge of going south. And we could get that fixed before it ends up being a problem. And so you could, by good by doing that analysis, you might point out, hey, just so you know, uh, you have t low tire pressure on this tire, and maybe you have an issue with this and that. Would you like for us to take care of that today? Or how, what would you, how, once you yeah. came back with the findings, what would you say to me at that point? Well, I'd say, the first thing I'd do is present it to the person. Yeah. And I'd say, some of these are, are not essential items at all. Okay. You know, you, if you're not concerned about them, you don't have to address them. Okay. This one you need to take care of. Okay. And we can take care of that for you. Uh, so you just do it in that sort of a way. It, it's a prescriptive thing. It's kind of like you say, uh, this will cure your illness. Yeah. And if you, if you want to get that scar to be not quite so visible, then you buy this cream. You know, yeah. whatever. Well, I want to, if you're watching this right now, let's say you're in the cosmetic surgery business or you're in the roofing <laughs> business or <laughs> any true. business you're in, every 
Every client I've ever worked with, I, I realistically, I, years ago I worked with a cosmetic surgeon, mm -hmm. and people would come in to have a mole removed, and he, they would say, have you, had, have you had a cancer screening recently for the rest of your skin? Have you done that? Yeah. Uh, have you done this? Have you done that? And they're just asking, going through a checklist, yeah. and they find that most people hadn't had a cancerous mole screening in over a decade. So they said, well, we, we can go ahead and do that for you if you'd like. Yeah. And yes, you did upsell more, but I can't tell you how many people had early signs of skin cancer that were treated and they prevented from letting that grow yeah. and develop into a problem. So you I mean, they were really helping people by taking the time to go through this analysis and have that prescriptive approach. Yeah. Let's say that I'm watching this and I'm 100%, I get it. I'm going, okay, I get it. How do I get my entire team to do it? Let's say now I have 10 people that work on my team at this, going back to this transmission shop. Yeah. So now you're the owner of the transmission shop, and but you have 10 guys who work with you. How do you get them to also have the upserve mentality and to go through this kind of prescriptive approach? How do you do it? First thing you've got to recognize is it's all about the upserve mentality. Mm. That relationship selling, the difference between it and transactional selling, which is all about the money and the things, um, is the mindset. Okay. The way you think about what you do, why you do it, and who you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. So first thing I would do is I'd get my staff together and I'd say, folks, I've been through some training recently that has changed my thinking about some of the things we do. So we're going to be taking a different approach to the way we serve our customers from this point forward. One of the things I want to do more than anything else is assure every customer that the reason we're here is to make their life better. Okay. We're going to remove their concerns about the safety and reliability of their car, and everything we do needs to be focused on that. Well, hey, how are we going to, you know, we need to sell more of these, uh, you know, whatever yeah whatever you know and uh, well we'll sell plenty of those if what we do is serve that customer and convince them that we are their automotive problem solver you're saying something that's 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 powerful and I don't want to miss it um, if, if you're watching this this is this is awesome stuff here because you've been doing this for what 37 years as a 39, speaker yeah. 39 as a speaker yeah. and trainer so this is a natural mindset to you but W Clement Stone has this quote he says, sales are contingent upon the attitude of the salesman, not the attitude of the prospect. Yeah. So what if I'm a salesperson, a business owner, a manager, how does my attitude about upselling versus upserving, let's say, how does that affect my sales totals? I mean, if I have this upselling attitude mm -hmm. or versus the upserving attitude, how does that affect my actual sales totals? People can tell. People can instantly sense the feeling that's coming from you. If, okay. if you're all about a bigger sale, about getting more of their money, yeah. like this old sales manager that I had when I was selling cars <laughs> a zillion years ago, he'd say every Monday morning, all right, guys, he says, look, there's a lot of folks out there that's got our money in their pocket. Mm, it's war. So it's your job to get out there and get it. And so we felt like a bunch of carnivores, you know, we're, <laughs> you know, bring a customer onto the lot and we'll devour them. <laughs> and, but if you're, you say, ah, no, that's just, you know, I'm not that way, but I, I get it that it's all about the money. No, it's not all about the money. It's yeah. all about being of service. And if you do that, you will make more and more and more money throughout your entire career. So the reason it matters so much is that if you don't control your thinking, you don't change the way you look at what you're doing, who you're doing it for, and why, yeah. they'll know. I, I want to I throw this out here because, again, I, I, hopefully I can make fun of myself, so you don't have to do it. I want to <laughs> take that off your plate. Um, but uh, I work with a lot of fitness. Here's to you, my friend. <laughs> I work with a lot of fitness uh, uh, businesses. And I used yeah. to work with one back in the day, and the manager, general manager, had the exact mindset you talked about. Yeah. And he literally, one girl walks in one time and does a tour of the facility, and he goes, the floor that you're standing on right now is the actual floor they used in Barcelona to train the athletes, and which is totally a fabricated. Of course. You know, and course. then he says, and now we have a special that's going until Friday. Now, if you pay up front for the year, you can do a... And he did every move possible. Like, I'm going to go talk to my manager. We have one of one availability. Sure. Let me see. Standing if I can... room only closed. The hat in hand closed. The, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, he went through the whole deal. And so, plus a bunch of lies. Yeah. So he went through. And yeah. I see him in the hallway. And he's like, you see that? <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. I got him. I got it's him more like, 
Did you see that? Yeah, that's exactly. And he yeah. thought he was the man. That's right. Well, he goes through this process and he's just beating people up. Yeah. Well, now that same person, it's almost a decade later. I saw the guy because he'd basically lost everything he owns and he'd struggled and stuff. And he, his reputation, you know, Tulsa's not a huge community. Dallas isn't a huge community. San Diego's not a huge community. All these communities, I mean, the yeah. world's kind of small now. Yeah. Not only do you not upsell more, but you get the reputation of being a high pressure upsell kind of guy. That's right. So, I mean, there's, in this world of social media, I mean, the transparency, I mean, Yelp. Up, Yelp, for example, yeah. Like upserving, yeah. I mean, if you don't upserve, it's going to get out on social media. Oh, There's yeah. so many benefits. Yeah. So I want to ask you, how do you um, consistently get your team? Let's say that. Let's say that now you've told your team, hey, guys, there's a new mindset. I'm learning some things. I want us to upserve. Mm -hmm. How do you, in a systematic way, get your team to consistently upserve? First, you do it every day. Every day. And, and you, you control the environment. Okay. You know, one of the things that I know you're a believer in is keeping the visual uh, as a, a tool to help you. You know, putting yeah. quotes on the wall, putting inspiring photographs here and there, that sort of thing. Yeah. So you make sure that the things that people see day to day and the information that they get is packaged in such a way that is presenting that attitude consistently. Because if you've got a picture of a pit bull on the wall and it says it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, you've got to bite first, bite hard, and never stop biting, well, that might stimulate some competitive spirit, but it's also going to intimidate and cause people to be more of that, uh, that upseller. So one is the environment. Let's get that yeah. environment right. Yeah. That's, a, that's an action item you can do if you're watching this. Get the environment right. Let's get that. Now, do we want to have like a regular meeting? Do we want to say, guys, every no, you day? Don't have, you don't have to do that, but you do need daily, daily. to reinforce verbally what you're talking about. Okay. And so if someone's talking and they say, uh, hey, I got this guy the other day and I made him buy a da 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 da, -da. excuse me. Yep. Say, Clay, it was something you said just a minute, I, I made him buy XX and Y. Um, that's not the attitude we want to cultivate here. And he says, dude, you know, it's just words. Well, words represent thoughts, and thoughts represent feelings and beliefs. Amen. And so if you don't have the right feelings and beliefs, then it's going to come out as the words that are going to tell other people, don't trust me. I had a sales center back in the day that I built for the DJ Connection, and yeah. it was so fun. It was so upserve focused yeah. that the customers used to want to come into our sales room and see it. Yeah, and I, I used would. to let them in. I let them come in the back sure. and they would be like, oh, cool. This is, and we had, you know, our scripts up and our systems, but nothing was designed to trick people. It was, yeah. it was, it was designed to help people. Very open. And it was very open. That's the thing, by the way. With upserving, yeah. you can be honest with people. And you don't ever have to remember a lie. You know, did he say Barcelona or did he say Spain? Or <laughs> yeah. what, what did he say about the floor? You know, I don't know. Make something up, right? Well, I want to say, I want to hammer home what you're saying because I've seen, um, one of the businesses I used to do consulting with, a guy I had under his monitor, he had written the words. It was something like uh, upsell or go to hell or something like that. Oh, it, like it was like a little tip he wrote down yeah. to, for reminding yeah. the, the, himself to upsell the customer or to basically tell them to screw themselves. It was kind of his mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Take um, their money. This and I was like, you've got to take yeah. that off, bro. And he's like, wow. Like, one, it's like it's contagious. It's contaminated. Yes, it's, it is. So, you're, so it's an action item. Every Thriver, though, they've got to make sure their environment's positive. We've got to do that. Yeah, to the extent that it's appropriate. Okay. You know, and stretch the limits on what's appropriate. Yeah. You know, if, if you're adding positive things to the environment, then... Uh, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities there. It could be things that inspire you. could be information you need to be reminded of. It could be a quote that touches you. Um, it could be a photograph of someone that you admire. Okay. Any number of and things. And then we need to talk about it all the time, every day. Yeah, Just yeah. Verbally we need to talk about it. And also the information and, and if you have forms, yeah. the wording matters. Okay. You know, it, it also when you're doing the reports, uh, let's say you get together with your sales team and you're doing a recap of that week's activity, then don't have a category there that says upsells. Okay. Just call it upserves. And if, if you're doing that, then what you, what you do is you shift everybody else's thinking toward how can I increase the satisfaction. Okay. And that's the whole point. So there's, How can I get them more satisfied? There's three action items I'm getting here, though. One is let's make the environment right. Two, let's daily reinforce it. And yep. three, let's get the words right on our forms, our nomenclature, what we're saying and, and we're doing. And let's inspect what we expect. So okay. in other words, let's, on each sales report, how did we upserve? Now, it doesn't mean what else did we sell. What it means is 
in what ways did we make this even better for the client? Because some of the things you do for upserving won't pay off at all okay. directly. Yeah. But everything you do in upserving will pay off indirectly. Now, Zig Ziglar, uh, the guy who's endorsed your books, and, you know, I mean, he's the guy you, you met and knew well, and, and um, he has this quote. He says, lack of direction, not lack of time, is the problem. We all have a 24-hour day. Yeah. Jim, what is the best way for sales managers and sales professionals to find time to train their team when they're so busy? You hear a lot of people say, Jim, I'm, I love what I heard at your conference. I, I, read, I, love, I read your book. But I, I read your book. I just, I just don't have time. I'm so busy. Yeah. What would you say to that? Well, that goes back to the old analogy. If, if you don't take time to sharpen the axe, then, then chopping the wood harder is only going to wear you out because it's <laughs> not going to cut through the wood well right. enough. Uh, You've got to make time for training. And, and the first way to do that is do the training during the work, included in the work. Mm -hmm. You know, just start um, incorporating coaching into just the normal routines so it doesn't have to be a separate event. Okay. But if you don't pull people off the work line occasionally and talk about why it matters, how it works, how you can make it better, and listen to them yeah. to get their input, then you'll never advance. You'll just do the same thing hard, 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 hard every day after. As far as specifics go for Thrivers, I'm not saying this is the ratio you should do. Every business is different. But I can yeah. say um, we just hired a, a young lady on our team. I was just having the conversation yesterday with one of our guys, and I said, you know, she needs to spend 17 hours doing, and we need to have three to four hours a week. That's, let's, go ahead and book, let's book the time mm -hmm. to teach her X, Y, Z every week, you know, and that's part of her schedule. So she yeah. spends 17 hours doing, four hours learning, and it's booked training time, and we need to make sure that ongoing, remember learning is not an event, it's an ongoing process. Exactly. Um, I, I want to ask you this, how important is, how important is it really, is, is, is up serving to the financial health of a company? Let's say I'm watching this and I'm going, well, you know, I just want to upsell people to the cry, buy, or die. I want to make sure that I'm pushing people <laughs> to buy. Cry, buy, or you gotta die. you got to do it. you got to do it. Or upsell or, or go to hell. we got yeah. pictures of, of bulldogs in our office. Yeah. We're just upselling. Some people are writing some nasty stuff on Yelp. But we're just going to keep on upselling. How would long-term financial health? Long-term financial health, if you examine the companies that do upserving, you know, just uh, habitually. Yeah they are always more profitable than the ones that focus on upselling. The upsell, even in a bank, which is typically not seen as a sales environment. Mm -hmm. I used to work in banking. And uh, in a bank where upselling is the emphasis, you'll find that there's a different feeling. They're not, they don't seem to really care about you as much. Yeah. I, oh, I love this. One time I was flying out of uh, Schiphol Airport uh, in Amsterdam. Hmm. And I went up to the Swiss Air thing to check in, you know, the, the uh, counter. And there's a little flyer. And it's one of those customer evaluation things, you know, yeah. feedback. And it has a picture of a flight attendant. She's looking at the camera. And the caption says, did we care? Mm. Not, did we treat you well? How did we do? Not the usual question. Did we care? Love it. And the final analysis, that's what everybody wants to know. You know I was talking to a guy one time on, on a customer service call-in thing, and I'd been on hold forever, and finally I got through to this guy, and I told him, I said, here's my problem. He said, well, you should have called last week. I said, well, yeah, thank you, but it's this week. Yeah. He said, yeah, I know, but you should have called last week because that expired on Friday. And I said, well, I still have the problem. Mm. He said, yeah, you should have called last week. I said, I get it. I should have called last week. Yeah. And he said, yeah, you should have. And it's like, uh, in his mind, everything ended right there. He, he wasn't trying to help me. Right. He was just trying to tell me what the law was, and I had broken it. And I said, okay, in light of the fact that I didn't call last week, and that's going to never change. Right. What can I do now? He said, well, you should. I said, I know. No, I thank said, you. I said, I know this is frustrating to you. He said, yeah. And I said, it's frustrating me, too. Would you transfer me to someone who cares? There you go. And he just stumbled. And, and he said, well, I care. I said, no, I mean about me and you know, helping me solve my problem. He said, well, I, I, I care about that. And I said, I couldn't tell by the way you were talking with me. We've all, if we're, if we're being honest, anybody watching this right now, we've all run into this situation. We've all yeah. had this. We, we all have. Uh, and it's just so important. I just want to, not that, 
Not that uh, you as a best-selling author and an internationally renowned speaker has won every speaking award there, there is pretty much. Not that you need any more uh, outside support to, to, to prove what you're saying, but I just want to share with the Thrivers. If you look up the term net promoter score today in Google, just look up the term net promoter score. And you look at the companies that are scoring the best, let's talk about Apple. They make packaging so good you want to keep it. The products just work. If you think about Starbucks, yeah. if you think about Disney World, yeah. you think about uh, Trader Joe's, you think about Whole Foods. Companies that have legendary customer service, yeah. they're the ones that have the long-term value. They're the ones who are succeeding right now. So what you're saying is absolutely true. And I want to give you the uh, opportunity to kind of share a final thought, sure. kind of mentally marinate. If you're talking to the Thrivers who are looking right there in that camera, who are looking right at you and they're saying, What's the one takeaway you want me to take out of this training on upserving? What, what would you say to them? Let me give a, an example I think we can all relate to. It's the one you just mentioned, Apple. I used to have a computer that was not an Apple. And every time I'd take it to the store, the people at the store, would, if I needed service, they would focus on the computer and make it work right. Yeah. Okay. I went into the Apple store, and they would focus on me and helping me become productive in the ways I wanted to be productive. Mm. In other words, it wasn't about the computer, about what the computer did for me. Wow. It was the serving, not the selling. Not the, it wasn't the technology, it was the person and the effect on the person. And that's the whole point of upserving, is that it's all about helping that person and finding a way to do so at a profit, but the profit's secondary, not primary. Jim, I, I appreciate you coming in today and teaching us an idea that it's kind of counterintuitive. You, you think when you're not focusing on profit, you won't make any. But if you do this, I promise the Thrivers, if you do <laughs> this, you will, will make up. so much more profit when you yeah. don't focus on that. Um, but I, I can't tell you how much I, I, we appreciate you coming here, flying all the way in here to the dojo of Happy Mojo here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> leaving. The, so I appreciate you again. Thank you very much. You JT, do you know what time it is? Um, 4.10. It's it's Tebow time in Tulsa, oh. Jerusalem, baby. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma, June 27th and 28th. We've been doing business conferences here uh, since 2005. I've been hosting business conferences since, since 2005. What year were you born? Uh, 1995. Dude, I've been hosting business conferences since you were 10 years old, but I've never had to the two-time Heisman Award winning Tim Tebow come present. And a lot of people, you know, have followed Tim Tebow's football career on the field uh, and off the field. And off the field, the guy's been just as successful as he has been on the field. Now, the big question is, JT, how does he do it? Hmm. Well, they're going to have to come and find out because I don't know. Well, I'm just so. saying, Tim Tebow is going to teach us how he organizes his day, how he organizes his life, how he's proactive with his faith, his family, his finances. He's going to walk us through his mindset that he brings into the gym, into business. It is going to be a blasty blast in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Also, this is the first uh, Thrive Time Show event that we've had where we're going to have a man who has built a $100 million net worth. Wow. He'll be presenting. Now, we've had a couple presenters that... Um, have had a billion dollar net worth mm. um, in some like real estate sort of things. Yeah. But this is the first time we've had a guy who's built a service business and he's built over a hundred million dollar net worth in the service business. It's the yacht driving, uh, multi-state living guru of franchising. Peter Taunton will be in the house. This is the founder of Snap Fitness, the guy behind Nine Round Boxing. He's going to be here in Tulsa, Jerusalem, Tulsa, Jerusalem, Oklahoma, June 27th and 28th. JT, why should should everybody want to hear what Peter Totten has to say? Oh, because he's incredible. He's just a fountain of knowledge. He is awesome. He has uh, inspired me listening to him talk. And not only that, he also has, uh, he practices what he teaches. So he's a real teacher. He's not a fake teacher like business school teachers. So you got to come learn from him. Also, let me tell you this, folks. I don't want to get this wrong because if I get it wrong, um, someone's going to say, you screwed that up, buddy. So Michael <laughs> Levine, this is Michael Levine. He's going to be coming. You say, Who, who's Michael Levine? I don't want to get this wrong. This is the PR consultant of choice for Michael Jackson, wow. for Prince, wow. for Nike, for mm. Charlton Heston, for Nancy mm. Kerrigan, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestselling authors he's represented, including pretty much everybody you know who's been a super celebrity. This is Michael Levine, a good friend of mine. He's going to come and talk to you about personal branding and the mindset needed to be super successful. The lineup will continue to grow. We have hit Christian recording artist 
Colton Dixon in the house. Now, people say, Colton Dixon's in the house? Yes, Colton Dixon's in the house. So if you like top 40 Christian music, Colton Dixon's going to be in the house performing. The lineup will continue to grow each and every day. We're going to add more and more speakers to this all-star lineup. But I encourage everybody out there today, get those tickets today. Go to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. And some people might be saying, well, how do I do it? What do I do? How does it work? You just go to thrivetimeshow.com. Let's go there now. We're feeling the flock. We're going to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, you just go to thrivetimeshow.com. You click on the business conferences button, and you click on the request tickets button right there. Uh, the way I do our conferences is we tell people it's $250 to get a ticket yep, or whatever price that you could afford. And the reason why I do that is I grew up without money. Uh, JT, you're in the process of building a super successful company. Um, yep. Did you start out with a million dollars in the bank account? No, I did not. Nope. Did not get any loans, nothing like that. Did not get an inheritance from parents or anything like that. I had to work for it. And I uh, am super grateful. I came to a business conference. That's actually how I met you, met Peter Taunton. I met all these people. So if you're out there today and you want to come to our workshop again, you just got to go to thrivetimeshow.com. You might say, well, when's it going to be? June 27th and 28th. And you might say, well, who's speaking? We already covered that. You might say, where's it going to be? It's going to be in Tulsa, Jerusalem, Oklahoma. I suppose it's Tulsa, Jerusalem. Uh, it's I'm really trying to rebrand Tulsa as Tulsa, Jerusalem, sort of like the Jerusalem of America. But if you go to, if you type in Thrive Time Show and Jinx, you can get a sneak peek or a look at our office facility. This is what it looks like. This is where you're headed. It's going to be a blasty blast. You can look inside, see the facility. We're going to have hundreds of entrepreneurs here. It is going to be packed. Now, for this particular event, folks, uh, the seating is always limited because my facility isn't a limitless um convention center you're coming to my actual home office and so it's going to be packed so when june 27th and 28th who you you're going to come who you I, I, i'm talking to you you can just get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com and again you can name your price we tell people it's 250 dollars or whatever price you can afford and we do have some select vip tickets which gives you an access to meet some of the speakers and those sorts of things and those tickets are 500 dollars. it's a two-day interactive business workshop over 20 hours of business training we're going to give you a copy of my newest book the millionaire's guide to becoming sustainably rich you're going to leave with a workbook you're going to leave with everything you need to know to start and grow a super successful company it's practical it's actionable and it's tebow time right here in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Get those tickets today at thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. Hello, I'm Michael Levine, and I'm talking to you right now from the center of Hollywood, California, where I have represented over the last 35 years 58 Academy Award winners, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestsellers. I've represented a lot of major stars, and I've worked with a lot of major companies and I think I've learned a few things about what makes them work and what makes them not work. Now, why would a man living in Hollywood, California in the beautiful sunny weather of LA come to Tulsa? Because last year I did it and it was damn exciting. Clay Clark has put together an exceptional uh, presentation, really life-changing and I'm looking forward to seeing you then. I'm Michael Levine. I'll see you in Tulsa. James, did I tell you my good friend John Lee Dumas is also joining us at the in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show Business Workshop? That Tim Tebow and that uh, Michael Levine will be at. Have I told you this? You have not told me that. Oh, he's coming all the way from Puerto Rico. This is John Lee Dumas, the host of the chart-topping EOFire.com podcast. He's absolutely a living legend. This guy started a podcast after uh, uh, wrapping up his service in the United States military. And he started recording this podcast daily in his home to the point where he started interviewing big time folks like Gary Vaynerchuk, like Tony Robbins. And he just kept interviewing bigger and bigger names, putting out shows day after day. And now he is the legendary host of the EO Fire podcast. And he's traveling all the way from Puerto Rico to Tulsa, Oklahoma to attend the in-person June 27th and 28th Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshop if you're out there today folks you've ever wanted to grow a podcast a broadcast you want to get in you want to improve your marketing if you've ever wanted to improve your marketing your branding if you've ever wanted to increase your sales you want to come to the two-day interactive june 27th and 28th 
Thrive Time Show Business Workshop featuring Tim Tebow, Michael Levine, John Lee Dumas, and countless big-time, super successful entrepreneurs. It's going to be life-changing. Get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com. James, what website is that? thrivetimeshow.com. James, one more time with more enthusiasm. thrivetimeshow.com. Shine, everything rides on tonight. Even if I got three strikes, I'm going to go for it. This moment, we own it. Eh? I'm not to be played with because it could get dangerous. See, these people I ride with, this moment, we own it. Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get-rich-quick, walk-on-hot-coals uh, product. It's literally we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 Auto Auction. I want you to Google Elephant in the Room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same system that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever. And we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. Now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you. I learned at the Academy in Kings Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Harvard Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Today I'm broadcasting from Phoenix, Arizona, not Scottsdale, Arizona. They're close, but they're completely different worlds. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, definition of intelligence is if you agree with me, you're intelligent. And so this gentleman is very intelligent. I've done this show before also, but very seldom do you find somebody who lines up on all counts. And so Mr. Clay Clark, he's a friend of a good friend, Eric, Eric Trump. But we're also talking about money, bricks, and how screwed up the world can get in a few and a half hour. So Clay Clark is a very intelligent man. And there's so many ways we could take this thing but I thought, uh, since you and Eric are close, Trump, what were you saying about what Trump can't, what Donald, who is my yeah. age, and I can say or cannot say? What, well, I have to, first of all, I have to honor you, sir. I want to show you what I did to one of your books here. There's All a right. guy by the name of Jeremy Thorne 
who was my boss at the time. I was 19 years old working at Faith Highway. I had a job at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And he said, have you read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? And I said, no. And uh, my father, may he rest in peace, um, he didn't know these financial principles. So I started reading all of your books and uh, really devouring your books. And I went from being an employee to self-employed, to the business owner, to the investor. And I owe a lot of that to you. And I just wanted to take a moment to tell you, thank you so much for allowing me to, to, to achieve success. And then I'll tell you all about Eric Trump. But I just want to tell you, thank you, sir, for changing my life. But not only that, Clay, you know, thank you, but you've become an influencer. You know, more than anything else, you've evolved into an influencer where your word has more and more power. So that's why I uh, congratulate you on becoming. Because as you know, there's a lot of fake influencers out there too, or bad influencers. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you and I agree so much. And thanks for reading my books. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest thrill for me today. Not a thrill, but recognition is when people, young men especially, come up and say, I read your book, changed my life. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I learned at the Academy, King, Kings Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does not what they say. Whoa. Hey, I'm Ryan Wimpy. I'm originally from Tulsa, born and raised here. I went to a small private liberal arts college and got a degree in business, and I didn't learn anything like they're teaching here. I didn't learn linear workflows. I learned stuff that I am not using, and I haven't been using for the last nine years. So what they're teaching here is actually way better than what I got at business school. And I went what was actually ranked as a very good business school. The linear workflow, the linear workflow for us in getting everything out on paper and documented is really important. Um, like we have workflows that are kind of all over the place. So the having linear workflow and seeing that mapped out on multiple different boards uh, is pretty awesome. That's really helpful for me. The atmosphere here is awesome. I definitely just stared at the walls, figuring out how to make my facility look like this place. This place rocks. It's invigorating, the walls are super, um, it's just very cool. The atmosphere is cool, the people are nice, uh, it's a pretty cool place to be. Very good learning atmosphere. I literally want to model it and steal everything that's here at this facility and uh, basically create it just on our business side. Once I saw what they were doing, I knew I had to get here at the conference. This is probably the best conference or seminar I've ever been to in over 30 years of business. You're not bored. You're awake, alive the whole time. It's not pushy. They don't try to sell you a bunch of things. I was looking to learn how to just get control of my life, my schedule, and just get a control of the business. Planning your time, breaking it all down, making time for the, you know, the F6 in your life, and just really implementing it and sticking with the program. It's really lively. He's, they're pretty friendly, uh, helpful, and very welcoming. I attended a conference a couple months back, and it was really the best business conference I've ever attended. At the workshop, I learned a lot about time management, um, really prioritizing what's the most important. The biggest takeaways are, you know, you want to take a step-by-step -step approach to your business. So whether it's marketing, you know, what are those three marketing tools that you want to use to human resources. Now, some of the most successful people and successful businesses in this town, their owners were here today because they wanted to know more from Clay, and I found that to be kind of fascinating. The most valuable thing that I've learned is diligence, that businesses don't change overnight. It takes time and effort and you gotta go through the ups and downs of getting it to where you wanna go. He actually gives you the road map out. I was stuck, didn't know what to do, and he gave me the road map out step by step. We've set up systems in the business that make my life much easier, allow me some time freedom. Here you can ask any question you want, they guarantee it'll be answered. This conference like motivates me and also gives me a lot of knowledge and tools. It's up to you to do this. Um, everybody can But if you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it for you. I can see the marketing working, and it, it's just an approach that makes sense. Probably the most notable thing is just the, the income increase that we've had. Everyone's super fun, it's super motivating. Uh, I've been here before, but I'm back again because it motivates me. Your competition's going to come eventually or try to pick up these tactics. So you better, you, if you don't, somebody else will. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine, and we just want to give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. 
We love you guys, we appreciate you, and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house. Right? This is where we used to live two years ago. This is our old neighborhood. So this is my old van and our old school marketing, and this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing, and this is our new team. We went from four to 14, and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past, and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you, times a thousand. So we really just want to thank you, Clay, and thank you, Vanessa, for everything you've done, everything you've helped us with. We love you guys. If you decide to not attend the Thrive Time Workshop, you're missing out on a great opportunity. The atmosphere at Clay's office is very lively. You can feel the energy as soon as you walk through the door. And it really got me and my team very excited. If you decide not to come, you're missing out on an opportunity to grow your business. Bottom line. Love the environment. I love the way that Clay presents and teaches. It's a way that not only allows me to comprehend what's going on, but he explains it in a way to where it just makes sense. The SEO optimization, branding, marketing, I've learned more in the last two days than I have the entire four years of college. The most valuable thing that I've learned Marketing is key. Uh, marketing is everything. Making sure that you're branded accurately and clearly. How to grow a business using Google reviews and then just how to optimize our name through our website also. Helpful with uh, a lot of marketing, search engine optimization, um, uh, helping us really rank high in Google. The biggest thing I needed to learn was how to build my foundation, how to systemize everything and optimize everything, build my SEO. How to become more organized, uh, more efficient. How to make sure the business is really there to serve me, as opposed to me constantly being there for the business. New ways of advertising my business, as well as recruiting new employees. Group interviews, number one. Uh, before we felt like we were held hostage by our employees. Group interviews has completely eliminated that because you're able to really find the people that would really be the best fit. Hands on how to hire people, how to deal with human resources, um, a lot about marketing, and overall just how to structure the business, how it works for me, and also then how that can translate into working better for my clients. The most valuable thing I've learned here is time management. I like the one hour of doing your business is real critical if I'm going to grow and change. Play really teaches you how to navigate through those things and not only find freedom, but find your purpose in your business and find the purposes for all those other people that directly affect your business as well. Everybody. 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 Everyone. Everyone needs to attend the conference because you get an opportunity to see that it's real. 